You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Probe 7, log entry 1411. Another waking period. Ship seems to be functioning perfectly as usual. Wish they could make cars this reliable back home. Oxygen supply, right on the button. Food supply, a little over. Something wrong with my appetite. Not enough exercise, I guess. I know. I know. More workout time. Gotta stay in shape. Never know who I might meet in space. Coordinates on autopilot. Propulsion system humming like a top. Pressure flow, output, all right on the money. Oh, come on, guys. You don't need a pilot up here. Could have sent an unmanned probe. All I am is extra weight. Think how much farther this crate could go without me. Of course, you wouldn't have my brilliant observations. Boredom, followed by prolonged disinterest, with periods of great loneliness. Must be fascinating. Here's an observation. All these blinking lights in the cockpit. They remind me of stars, or candles, or uh, cigarette lighters. That's it. You remember cigarettes? Did you know at concerts people had these little lighters, and sometimes they'd hold them up and, and look like a, a sea of stars out there in the dark? <laughs> I, I want to write a book, not this diary. Doesn't have enough plot. Just me remembering. That's who I am, boys. He who remembers. Oh, well. Better send you the numbers. Here goes the download. Transmitting now. Till next time, this is Colonel A.L. Cook. Over and out. Hold on, I think we've got a malfunction here. Some kind of overload. Yep, there's a power drain. Initiating diagnostics. No time for that. Switching to manual override. Base, this is Probe 7. Probe 7, calling base. Come in. I've just lost a rocket tube. Can't handle this baby. Controls won't respond. Losing power fast. Have to set down on the nearest planet.
got one in view now. Not much choice. Entering atmosphere. Surface coming up fast. Can't slow down. No retro rockets. Ship's about to catch fire. Base, do you read? This is probe seven. Probe seven. Mayday. 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 One Colonel Cook. Traveler in deep space, several million miles from his point of departure and presently out of options. He set a course across an endless ocean in a one-man lifeboat, now scorched and broken on an alien shore. But even if he should survive, his greatest ordeal is yet to come. For he must face a far more dangerous challenge, an opponent more menacing than the cold, lifeless vacuum of space. He must face what awaits him on the other side of the bulkhead and do battle with the unknown. As soon as the dust settles, he will take stock of his plight with very little effort, a single 360-degree movement of head and eyes. For Colonel Cook has come to rest on a small, undistinguished planet not on any chart, one that is actually an outpost in the Twilight Zone. And now, the Twilight Zone and our story... Probe 7, Over and Out, starring Lou Gossett Jr., with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Log entry 1412. I'm alive. That's all I know for sure. The ship is wrecked pretty badly. It might be possible to realign the main drive, but... Not without help. So far, I'm holding up. One badly bruised head and a broken right arm for which I made a sling. A few more painkillers in the first aid kit, but after that, I'm on my own. The planet has an atmosphere, so I don't need the pressure suit. That's another stroke of luck, if you can call it that. The terrain is desolate. Sand, rocks... Some low-grade plant life. That means there's water. The question is, how much and where? The ship has cooled down now. What's left of it? Main instrument panel is intact, so I'll try to contact the base directly. If there's enough power. More later. Cook, signing off. This is Probe 7. Do you read? Probe 7. This is Probe 7, calling base. Probe 7? With a landing report and damage assessment. Over to you, base. This is Probe 7. Come on, base. I'm waiting.
Blaine, is that you? Yes, yes, this is Lieutenant Blaine. We read that you're... This is Cook, Probe 7. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you. Cook? Cook, we thought we'd lost you. Your, your transmission was interrupted. Everything was interrupted. I'm lucky to be alive. Probe 7 made unscheduled landfall approximately seven hours ago. What? Come again. Can't hear? I thought you said... I've crash-landed, Blaine, in another planetary system. Didn't have much choice. One of the thrusters broke off the ship. This planet is 92,900,000 miles from the nearest star. Sorry, but I can't send or receive a visual. Most of my equipment was fried in the crash. Okay. How's your oxygen? And that's the least of my worries. There's an atmosphere here. I don't know its density or composition, but it's breathable. Probe 7? Probe 7, your signal's drifting. Can you increase power? Not much chance of that. Far as I can tell, this is the last of my juice, at least for now. I've got half a generator and three solar cells working. I was afraid it wasn't enough to get through at all. Okay. Can you affect repairs? Say again? Repairs. Repairs. Can you make repairs? <laughs> if you give me maybe 20 years, a good right arm, and a new head while you're at it, I might make a start. The bottom line is, I need help. Got that base? Help. And right away. Great! How soon can you send a ship? Colonel, I'm sorry to say we have nothing here that can reach you. What? You had several ships on the drawing board. Repeat, we have nothing available. Say again? All construction is suspended pending the current crisis. Ah, oh, come on! Colonel Cook, I've been told you'll have to make the repairs yourself. Base? Now hear this. I don't have fuel, no propellant at all. I left most of my rockets scattered across 50 miles of dirt and rock. All I have is a ship that looks like a jigsaw puzzle. As for the wiring, it's nothing but spaghetti. So when you say you've got nothing that can help you, you're telling me you're crossing off one spaceman permanently. Probe 7, we're having difficulty. Your words are breaking up. All right, base. I'll give it to you in a few syllables. This ship isn't going anywhere. Not forward, up, down, or back home. Is that plain enough for you? Now I'm asking you again. Isn't there anything you can do to help me out here? Or are you just going to write me off? Colonel Cook? There's the low power warning. I'm losing transmission. Got the sign off for now. I'll make contact again in three hours. Roger that, will you please, base? on this frequency, Colonel, and wait to hear from you. Oh, just a minute. There's someone here who wants to speak to you, Colonel. Colonel Cook, this is General Larrabee. We understand the spot you're in. We wish we could help. Thank you, sir. Well, there is a possibility that once you give us a full report on the ship, uh, we can send you instructions for its repair and walk you through it step by step. That's still an option. Is it? Well, here's an option. Why don't I just build me a new one, General? I'll make it out of tin cans and chewing gum. I'll burn some circuit boards with a magnifying glass. That's a possibility, too. Colonel, I'm trying to be frank with you. Sorry, sir. I'll transmit again in three hours. Over and out. Heaven help me. I wonder if that's a possibility.
Log entry 1413. I'm standing on a hillside a few meters from the ship. You hear that? I think there's going to be a change in the weather. Back home we call it a sandstorm. Better head back soon. I see vines and some flowers down the other side of the hill. There's more life here than I thought. As to what stage of evolution is reached, that's pure conjecture. No sign of animal life, but the vegetation grows thicker in certain areas, like the valley. Can't trust my leg yet. Better stay close to the ship. I've picked some plants for analysis. We'll see if there's anything edible. Hey! Anybody! Hey! Take me to your leader! I've got beads and wampum. Is anybody here? That's just great. The last good wires in the whole ship. Here comes that sandstorm. I'm gonna get the hat shut. Uh, close, will you? That's it. A little bit more. This is Probe 7, calling base. Probe 7, calling base. Over to you, if you read. We read you. We read you very well, Colonel. Ah, you've got the video going. For now, General, I've wired all the solar cells in the series. At the moment, I'm running off the storage batteries, though. It's almost night here. My situation? Yes. Any change, Colonel? I've done what I can, but I'd have to call it unchanged. The power level's higher as long as I charge up during the day, but I don't know how long that will last. At least, I've got you on the screen. Got to see another face. Both of you. You should be used to solitude. You've been in space a long time. Yeah, I should. But that was different somehow. I was a big something in the middle of nothing. This, though, I've landed and it feels like I'm supposed to be somewhere, and I'm not. My memory of home is fading fast. Uh, Colonel, and the condition of the ship, uh, still a total loss. Probe 7 is no longer probing, General, unless it's the few feet of dirt I tore up when I crashed. There is life here, like I said, vegetable life, pretty elementary. I've explored the surrounding area in all directions, but I can't get down to the valley with this leg. The gravity is roughly the same as ours. From what I can tell, the atmosphere is similar as well. At least, there's no pollution. I haven't started coughing yet. Describe what's left of the ship. What's left of the ship, General, is a few feet of bent-up metal. I told you, it's unrepairable. There isn't one other section that's still intact. She'll do for a museum or a junkyard. Take your pick. As for me, I don't have the luxury of making a choice. Nor do we, Colonel. Nor do we. Right. The crisis. Listen to me, Cook. We've got a major problem here. Oh, you do? Since you left, we've had an international a serious one. There's talk of war. The next 24 hours will be crucial. As long as I can remember, there's always been a crisis, and there's always been talk of war. Well, hasn't there? Yes. But this 
time, I'm afraid. You'll forgive me, General, but I've got a crisis too, and it's a very immediate one. I have the remainder of my rations and two broken bones in one arm. You have my location. I need to know that help of some sort is on the way, or would you call that unreasonable? Now listen up, Colonel. The rest of the fleet's been taken out. There isn't another ship, unless we build one. And if we go to hydrogen war in the next few hours, there'll be nobody left to do the building. Do I make myself clear? You're serious? That's the realistic view, Colonel. It may go down hard, but I'm giving you the facts of life. Ten hours from now, maybe six, maybe four, we'll be fully committed. I'm talking about a half billion people, not just one man. That's about as clear as I can put it. Very well then, General. I guess that's it. We don't see any alternative. Will there be any point in making further contact with base? Yes, Probe 7. For two reasons I can think of. Both of some benefit to you. One, so you'll know that you're not alone up there. And two, to confirm that your own world still exists. Though the latter is a moot question at this point. Over to you, Colonel. I can't think of anything else to say at the moment. Feel free to keep the signal open, if you like. Can't do that, General. I need to charge the batteries when it's light again. Here's that storm. Don't know how strong it'll be or how long it'll last. But I'll try to get through it. Nothing else I can do. Then for whatever it's worth, know that we're still here. Roger, base. And out. It's going to be a long night. Wait. What's that? Hold on. Blaine? General? I wish you could hear this. There's something outside, I swear. Something or someone. Log entry 1414. Just in case anybody ever hears this, I didn't get much sleep last night. I was waiting for the wind to die down. As soon as it did, I opened the hatch sometime around dawn. You see, I thought I heard something pounding on the hull, over and over. It couldn't have been an accident. It had to be something intelligent trying to signal me, to let it in from the storm. That was what I thought. Funny the way the mind works. I've never been so glad to hear anything in my life. And at the same time, so afraid. But I opened it anyway. Well, everything was covered with a fine layer of sand. Silica crystals, very much like the soil back home. And that was the trouble. Whatever had been outside, there was no sign of it now. If there were tracks, the sandstorm had wiped them out. The ground, everything, smooth as a beach where no man has gone before. I did find something, though. A broken branch. So, it was only the wind, after all, blowing it back and forth before it broke off. Had me going for a while. So much for my man, Friday. Now I'm back to the old routine. Reconnaissance, hunting, and gathering. Just think... A few million years from now, something on four legs or two or eight may actually walk this barren planet again. A few million more years, and it will grow a bigger brain so the species can start doing the same things I'm doing. Foraging for food, 
trying to survive. Wonder if there'll be anything left of the ship by then. Probably not. Me? I'll be a fossil at the bottom of a tar pit somewhere, and no one will realize I was ever here. Well, onward he marched, for want of anything better to do. Blaine, General Larrabee, are you still there? Here, Colonel. Go ahead. Well, you look like you haven't slept. Not much. And you? Not really. Up at dawn to do some hiking, north, east, south, and west. I had been hoping. Yes. Just a crazy dream I had. No sign of anything. It's a primitive planet. I'm very much alone here, after all. Oh, not completely. I've got a wind that sings sad songs and some scrawny plants that check me out every now and then as I walk by. There might be some fruit trees that are edible down in the valley, if they're not poisonous. But that's it. That's all of it. I'm truly sorry. There used to be an old saying: "If life gives you lemons, make lemonade." The only thing wrong is I can't even find the lemons. But don't worry, I'll keep trying. Not that this will provide any vast solace to you, but at nine o'clock this morning, Colonel, we went to war. And the whole eastern seaboard went up. You mean all of it? I suppose we retaliated. Oh, indeed, with great alacrity and effectiveness, and we still are, with everything we've got. It was、uh, our old enemy. That's right, if it matters now. And the result of all this, our world is doing a little wholesale dying at the moment, and there's nothing to do but watch it happen. What about the base? Are you safe? For the time being, our location is classified. Only you and a few others know where we are. The signals encrypted. That's good then. Trouble is, we can't stay here much longer. There have been bombs as close as 400 miles from us, falling through the night. It's now a question, Colonel. Of The manner of death, very fast or very slow. It's that kind of consideration, not one we thought would ever be a reality. General, you know it's really quite a pity that we didn't send others with you. What you think of as a prison might have proved to be a haven of sorts for the survival of the species. Don't have any illusions about it, General. What you think of as a haven is only a very sizable dungeon, a good-sized dungeon with a breathable air. But that's what it is, and there's no way out. I don't much care for solitary confinement, and neither would you. Unfortunately, both of us have very little choice in the matter. General, this is urgent. Give it to me. What is it, General? What's happening there? In a moment, Blaine. But General, I said in a moment. Cook, I've just received an official communication. We're going to have to move out of here now. I don't know whether we'll be able to transmit again or not. If we are able to, I'll do my best to make contact. You have my word. Thank you. Try if you can. It means a lot to hear a real, live voice.
Ja. Over en out. Not with a bang, but a whimper. Hell of an ending. To all my friends back home, take good care. Looks like I won't be seeing you again. Not in this life. Time to start a new project. Chapter one. The memoirs of Colonel A. L. Cook. And I've got a very good memory. He wouldn't believe the stories I could tell. Who knows? After I'm gone, maybe someone else will crash here and find it. A lifetime of memories. Every sight, every sound, all the way back to the beginning. The kids I knew, the girls I dated, my friends, mom and dad, the first job, all of it. Every detail recorded for posterity. Has anyone ever done that before? Maybe people who keep diaries their whole lives, except that no one ever got it all down. They didn't have the time, but I do. All the time in the world. Log entry, 1415. This one's for the record. A final official entry. From here on, it'll be the life story of Colonel A.L. Cook. Me, myself, and I. If for no other reason than to keep from going batty. But for now, it's a beautiful day. Here on Primordial World. Ship still standing, of course. You'd never know that's what it was. More like something from a scrap metal yard. The cost that went into building it, the man hours, and for what? To come to rest here. A little way station that isn't even on the map. I'd call that a waste. Exhibit number one in the elephant's graveyard. You ever hear of that? They used to say there was a place where elephants go to die. Hundreds, thousands of them. A secret place off the beaten path. And there were bones and tusks. And once in a great while, someone would stumble upon it. Like the Sargasso Sea, where sailing ships caught in the kelp and were trapped forever. Well, maybe other travelers will end up here, gone to ground, never to move again. Eventually, there'll be a whole collection of them from all over. But remember, I was the first. I should scratch it in the metal. Cook was here. But I digress. This is still supposed to be my official report. The evaluation of the crash site coming up. The tail fin is all but covered by sand. I have to dig it out before the next storm. Then build some kind of windbreak or the whole ship might get buried. I could gather some branches, make one. There's more vegetation in the valley if I can get up and over. Now, that's odd. If there are no other trees in the immediate vicinity, where did this branch come from? The one that was banging against the hull last night. Unless something carried it here. The wind or... Uh... Oh, well, maybe I just didn't notice before. That must be it. Rocks to the left of me, rocks to the right of me. One very dry, broken-off branch in the sand. And what great sand it is. None better in the known universe. On sale at closeout prices. Note the fine crunch under my boots as I walk the proud land. The rare texture, the superb body. Why, it's positively... What? What in the name of... It can't be. It looks exactly like... No, 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 I must be, I must be hallucinating, but... But this... Impression... I could swear it's, it's a footprint, a... Uh... 
a boot print, to be precise, a lot like my boot, in fact. But it's not one of mine, about four inches shorter. But that's what it is. It is! N now hear this. Now hear this. I've got company. I've got company. Hey, whoever you are, come on down. It's open house at my humble abode. It isn't much, but it's home. Drinks on me. Meet your genial host. Please. Please let me see you. Here's another footprint. And another. And another. Where do they lead? Up the hill? Has to be since the storm, so there was something here. I knew it! Hey! I don't care who you are or where you're from. Let's shake hands and be friends. Don't you need a friend? I do. Come on, friend. We can talk. I've got some stories, believe you me. Where are you hiding? Behind that bush? Ugh! Blood on my head. Something hit me. Why'd you do that? Group seven, come in. Uh, got to get inside. All right, I'm ready for you. You want in? Maybe I'll let you, and maybe I won't. It's up to you. You can be friendly, or you can be dead. Hey, friend. You want to come in? Must be lonely out there. I hear you. What's the matter? Hungry? You're going to get a lot hungrier. Or don't you eat, friend? What do you say? Speak up. Can't talk, huh? No. You only know how to hit. Take more than that to put me down. What'd you use, a tree branch? Not very friendly, if you ask me. 
Well, I've got a nice piece of metal in my hand, and I know what to do with it. Won't catch me again. Uh, this has been going on for hours. I don't know about you, but I need sleep. I really need it. Understand? Sleep. And this king-sized bump on my head doesn't help. Tell you what. We'll make a deal. I give you one more chance to get away. Go hide. I don't care. You may not understand the language, but maybe you get the message. I'll wait a while and catch some sleep. Then when I wake up, I'm going to have a nice freeze-dried dinner. If I don't hear you out there, we'll forget the whole thing. You stay up the hill, and I'll stay down here. Just remember to keep your distance. Otherwise, I might have to come up there and teach you a lesson. A man's got to have his boundaries. Oh, God, I hurt. I want to sleep just for a while. Hey, friend. Gotcha. Stay down. Pretty weak, aren't you? Let's see who you really are. Itoko. Miyano. Manda. Manda. No. You're a woman? No, no, wait, wait, let, let's talk. Can't we talk about it? Do you understand anything I'm saying? Min, oh boy. Look, look, look. My name is Cook, Colonel Cook. I'm from another planet. I, I crash landed here, cracked up my ship. This is my ship, get it? Or it was. It can't fly anymore. Now I'm just a, a wingless spaceman with no place to go and all the time in the world to get there. All right, be that way. I'm not going to hit you. I'm putting my weapon down, see? Ah, oh, what difference does it make? You're probably an illusion, and those prints you left on the ground, they're, they're illusions too. I've been fighting a, a running battle between fear and loneliness, and loneliness took the prize. You can disappear any time now. Any time at all. Go on. Poof. And a puff of smoke. No, wait. Wait, please. Are you real? This knot on my head certainly is. All right, all right. Do whatever you want. Just don't go. N not yet. If you can't understand, I'll draw you a picture. Where's the stick? Look. Right here in the sand. This is my solar system. The sun in the middle, and this is my world. See? Oh, Omida? Oh, oh, you got it. Now then, I went off course. I didn't have the power to get back. You know, power? Vroom, vroom. Ah, no good. So, I tried to land here, where we are. Ah. Ah. Oh, mida korum. Go ahead. You draw. Korum, mistum. Oh, that's your solar system. And your world. You came from there. Ah. Let me see now. It went out of orbit. Is that it? Your planet left its orbit and moved away from the sun. In the line, that's where you went and ah. where your world went, right? Ah. I'm sorry. Ah. What about now? Where's your planet now? 
Uh, uh, uh. I understand. Gone. Disappeared. Probably frozen by now. But you got out. How many others? How many got out? You got away. Any others? Min. One finger. That's a hard count, my dear. A very hard count. And you've been here a while, haven't you? Look at your suit. Your galaxy might be light years away. It would have taken years to reach here. Where's your ship? Ship. Where's your ship? It crashed too, didn't it? So you've been here a long time, a very long time. Me, Cook. Colonel Cook. You? Cor... Corava. Corava? Corava. Well, what do you know? I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. How does it figure? I thought you'd be a 50-foot flesh-eating ant or something. And you turn out to be a woman. Which is neither here nor there. Because however you slice it, we're stuck here. A one-armed man and one very tired lady. Quite a pair. What have you been living on? What food? You understand food? Eat? Uh, uh. Uh, well, I can offer you lunch or maybe uh, it's breakfast. I'm not sure which. And some companionship. And we can spend the rest of our lives drawing diagrams in the sand. Which will be somewhat tedious. But the brighter of us will have to learn the other's language eventually. I hope it's you. Because I've got some stories to tell. Believe me. Come, Korova. Eat. Food. In the ship. Chow time. Come along. Inside. Eat food. Food? O Okawa? Okawa? No, no, no. Not that way. Come here. Food. Please come back. I'm not going to hurt you. Please. Okawa! Oh, for heaven's sake. Korov, please. You scratched me. What did you do that for? That's all you know how to do, isn't it? Draw blood. Well, go ahead. Get away from me. It's not just language, is it? It's our animal nature, the way we instinctively respond to one another. In that case, there's not much hope. Go on. Go. If that's the way you want it, go. Base, this is Probe 7. The following is sent on faith, which is appropriate since this transmission is in the nature of a fairy story. I don't know under what heading you would classify it. Very likely space medicine or space opera. The long and the short of it is that I'm not alone here. There's a woman from another planet. Her name is Korova. I don't know much about her. I do know that she comes from another planet in another galaxy. A planet that left its orbit and moved out of space away from its sun. I suppose the inevitable happened. They just froze. She's not very old, so she must have been sent in a spaceship as a little girl. But now, that ship is no more. They probably sent others, too. God knows what happened to them. Died en route. Lost their way. Landed elsewhere, who knows. But somehow or other, she made it. Uh, perhaps uh, as a child, on a preset course. She was here alone, until I came. If by some chance you're still there, I can't send you any soil tests. I can't send you data about plant species or anything like that. 
But I can give you an observation about the psychological makeup of the animal kingdom. They're a frightened breed, a very frightened breed. It must be a, uh, it must be a universal trait wherever there are advanced life forms. Though it's questionable how advanced we really are, so I guess we aren't alone in that regard, which is really quite a pity, as you may understand all too well if any of you survived. Base, this is Probe 7, last call, absolutely, positively, the last. Over and out. Log entry, 1417. Well, the ship is history. I've left it for good. I finally made it up the hill and down the other side. And guess what? There's much more vegetation here. Fruit trees. Flowers as big as your head. And through it all, a stream of running water. I swear, it's like a garden. I brought what I need in a backpack. I'm going to set up shop on the banks of the river and try to live here, for better or worse. It will be the last great adventure. I only wish I could share it. Oh well, there's always posterity. If anyone should ever find this, and play it back. Cook! Oh, you. I was... Never mind. Talking to myself. But uh, you wouldn't understand. Why don't you just keep your distance? Cook? Ah. Cook. Not going to hit me, are you? No? That's a surprise. Well, you're just in time to say bon voyage, friend. I'm going that way. There are even more fruit trees over there. No reason to get in each other's way. Cook. You want to come? You may, if you like. We'll eat and we'll live. I don't know how or for how long, but we can try. Cook. What? Dirt? Soil? What do you call it? Earth. Earth? What does that mean? Earth. Is that the name in your language? All right. We've just given this place a name. We'll call it that. We'll call it Earth. Cook. Korava. Earth. That's right. M my name's Cook. My first name is... But uh, there's plenty of time for that. No need to rush things. Okay, Korava. This is our home now. This is Earth. What is, what, what's that? Food. So that's what you've been eating. Some kind of red fruit. Any good? Food. Eat. All right. Hmm. Not bad. We'll take some with us. If you think it's all right. Come on. Uh, oh, I wanted to tell you something, but now I've forgotten. I guess we'll have plenty to talk about, though. This place. A new life, after all. And after a while, we'll have new memories to talk about. Things we can share. Come along, then. Let's go. This fruit's all right. Any other life forms around? I hope not, for the moment. But if there are, we'll make the best of it, won't we? Pleasant enough place, don't you think? My leg's better. We'll explore as much of it as we can. No need to set up any boundaries, I guess. There's plenty for everyone. For you and for me. And it's a beautiful day. Do you know these people? Their names might be familiar were you to hear them. They lived a long time ago. Perhaps they're part fable, perhaps they're part fantasy. 
And perhaps the place they're walking through now is not really called Eden. That's for you to decide. We offer it only as a possibility and a presumption in the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com, where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. Probe 7, Over and Out, starring Lou Gossett Jr. with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Tony Maka Sr., Sam Derrance, and Oksana Fedanushin. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises and the Rod Serling Estate for making this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amare and Joe B. Cerny for Falcon Picture Group and Westwood One. Sound design and custom Foley effects for The Twilight Zone by Cerny American creatives Bob Benson, Craig Lee, Matt Sorrow, Tim Cerny, and Todd Byer. To learn more about The Twilight Zone radio dramas and to contact us, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Gotcha.